In this video, we're going to talk about labor demand in the short run. We start by assuming that firms attempt to maximize their profits. Economic profits are equal to total revenue minus total cost. We can write this in a simple model that we'll use initially as total revenue equals P times Q, and total costs are the sum of labor costs and capital costs. The labor cost is the wage rate times the number of employee hours. The capital cost is the price of capital, or times the quantity of capital. So we have total revenue minus labor costs minus capital costs equals economic profit. Let's think about how a firm's change in its labor use can affect its profits. What's going to happen to profit when employment rises? Well, if we look at this equation, we see there's two effects. On the one hand, if employment rises because of the short-run production function, output rises. So the firm ends up with more revenue. If you hire more workers, you produce more output, you have more revenue. On the other hand, cost rises as well. And the reason is that you have to pay those workers. So then the total effect on profit turns out to be ambiguous. It may rise, it may fall, or remain constant, depending on whether revenue goes up by more, less than, or the same amount as costs change. Two useful concepts to illustrate this are marginal revenue product and marginal factor cost. We define the change in revenue resulting from the use of one more unit of a resource as the marginal revenue product of that input. We define the marginal revenue product of an input as the change in revenue that results from the use of an additional unit of that resource. We define the marginal factor cost as being the change in costs that occur when we use one more unit of a resource. In general, you'd use more labor if revenue goes up by more than costs go up. In other words, if marginal revenue product is greater than marginal factor cost. You'd choose to use less labor if you're trying to maximize your profit if the revenue generated by the last worker, the marginal revenue product, is less than it costs. In other words, you would use more workers if the revenue they generate is more than it costs. You'd choose to use fewer workers if the additional revenue they're generating is less than you have to pay them. You would choose to use fewer workers if the revenue generated by that last worker is less than the additional cost of that labor. We're going to simplify the analysis by assuming perfect competition. Marginal revenue product can be written as marginal revenue times marginal product. As you may recall from your principles class, marginal revenue product equals marginal revenue times marginal product. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue you get from the sale of an additional unit of output. Marginal product is the additional output you get when you use one more unit of a resource. So for example, if marginal revenue is $5 and the marginal product of labor is 10, that would mean adding an additional hour of labor would generate 10 units of output that sells for $5 each, giving you additional revenue of $50. If the output market is perfectly competitive though, marginal revenue reduces to price times marginal product. Because we know in a perfectly competitive output market, price is constant because a firm is a price taker. Marginal revenue and price are the same. So marginal revenue product just becomes a price of output times the marginal product of labor. And that's defined as the value of the marginal product, which we'll be abbreviating as VMP. If the labor market is perfectly competitive, then the firm is a price taker on the input market and it pays the market wage. It has no effect over the wage that it pays. And as a result, the cost of an additional hour's worth of labor is just the wage rate. So that condition, that marginal revenue product is greater than marginal factor cost, reduces to you would use more labor if the value of the marginal product of labor, the revenue generated by that worker, is more than the wage rate, more than you have to pay for that additional labor. Similarly, you would use less labor if the value generated by the last unit of labor is less than its cost, which is the wage. Now, let's see if we can graph this. You should recall from your principles course or an earlier video the law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns states that as additional units of a variable input are added to a production process in which other inputs are fixed, the marginal product of the variable input will ultimately decline. One economist over a century ago suggested that if the law of diminishing returns did not hold, you could grow the entire world's food supply in a flower pot by just adding enough fertilizer, water, and so forth. In general, when other resources are held constant, such as capital, the gains you get by 
the increases in output you receive by using additional labor become smaller and smaller because workers are constrained by the limited amount of capital available. The value of the marginal product just equals price times marginal product. Since a price is positive and constant, this looks very much like the original marginal product curve. Now, while theoretically it's possible that marginal product might be rising at low levels of labor use, firms would never operate in that range. Because if it's optimal to hire the first worker and the second worker produces more additional output, it would always be optimal to hire that second worker. So we're going to be only concerned with the downward sloping portion of the marginal product and therefore the downward sloping portion of the value of the marginal product curve. Marginal factor cost is just the wage and we're assuming that it's a competitive market so that's constant. This diagram combines the value of the marginal product curve with a marginal factor cost curve the two curves intersect at a level of labor use of E star. If we look at points to the left of E star, we know that the value of the marginal product of labor is greater than the cost of an additional worker. We noted earlier that whenever this occurs, firms would use more labor use. Alternatively, if we look to the right of E star, we find that everywhere past E star, the value of the marginal product is less than the marginal factor cost. In this case, we argued that firms will use less labor. So in other words, if firm is anywhere to the left of E star, it will move towards E star from the left. If it's anywhere above E star, it will move towards E star from the right. At E star, the value of the output generated by that last incremental bit of labor is just equal to the cost and the firm has no incentive to change its labor use. In other words, the optimal level of labor use occurs at the point where the wage rate equals the value of the marginal product which in this case is at E star. Let's consider three different wages. In this diagram, we find that a wage of W0, the optimal level of employment is where the wage equals the value of marginal product, which is at E0. When the wage rises to W prime, the optimal level of employment occurs at E prime. When the wage rises to W double prime, the optimal level of employment rises to E double prime. What this should suggest is for each wage, the optimal level of employment occurs at the point where that wage equals the value of the marginal product. So in other words, if we look at the value of the marginal product curve, it tells us at each wage the quantity of labor that the firm would demand. If we have a curve that tells us the quantity of labor demanded at each and every possible wage, that's nothing more than a labor demand curve. For a firm operating in perfectly competitive output and resource markets, its labor demand curve is just the value of the marginal product curve. Now, if you think back to your principles class when you were looking at consumer demand, it was argued that the market demand curve is derived by adding together horizontally all the individual consumer demand curves. That doesn't quite work in the case of labor markets because imagine you added together all of the individual firms demand curves for labor. When we move along that curve, what happens is the amount of labor changes and when the amount of labor changes, the amount of output produced changes. So if we move to the right along that curve, when you're using more labor, you end up with more total output. Now while each individual firm is too small to affect the market price of output, all the firms together in the industry will affect the market price. So when the price of labor goes down and the quantity of labor goes up, the marginal revenue product itself changes. And what that means basically is that the industry labor demand curve is going to be somewhat steeper than, it, than the horizontal summation of individual firm demand curves would suggest. And that's the end of this section.